How fast will water flow out of the tank if the storage tank is open to the atmosphere at sea level? Now, in the figure below, the water level is 20 meters higher than the level where the water exits the tank. So how can we calculate the efflux speed of the water as it leaves that storage tank? To do this, we can use Torricelli's theorem, which is associated with this equation. The efflux speed is the square root of 2gh, where h is the height difference between the water level and the level where the water leaves. So in this case, h is 20. So the speed is simply the square root of 2 times the gravitational acceleration times the height difference. And this works if it's open to the atmosphere. And I will explain why using Bernoulli's equation shortly. So 2 times 9.8 times 20, that's 392, and then we've got to take the square root of that result. So the speed of the water as it leaves the tank is 19.8 meters per second. Now you can get the same equation using conservation of energy. So as the fluid descends, whenever something falls, the gravitational potential energy is decreasing. And that gravitational potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy as the fluid shoots out of the tank. So in this example, we could set kinetic energy equal to potential energy. So 1 half mv squared is equal to mgh. So we could cancel m, and then we can multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times a half is 1. So v squared is equal to 2gh, and then we need to take the square root of both sides, giving us this equation. So that's one way in which you can derive that equation. The other technique is using Bernoulli's equation. So Bernoulli's equation is p1 plus rho g h1 plus 1 half rho v1 squared. That's equal to p2 plus rho g h2 plus 1 half rho v2 squared. So when the water leaves the tank, it's exposed to the atmosphere, which the pressure is going to be about 1 atm. And even at the top, it's exposed to the atmosphere, so the pressure is 1 atm. So P1 and P2 in this problem is approximately the same. Now granted, the pressure 20 meters higher is going to be slightly less than the pressure at the bottom. But we're going to assume that it's almost the same. So we can neglect P1 and P2. We're going to assume that the atmospheric pressure doesn't change much between those two points. So the gauge pressure is zero. What's really important is the difference between these two values. Since the difference is zero, we don't have to worry about P1 and P2. Now, H1, we need to define our points. This is going to be point A and point B. So H1 is 20 meters higher than B. Let's say B is the ground level. So H1 is 20 and at point B, the height is 0, so H2 is 0, since that is at ground level. So this term will disappear. Now, as the fluid shoots out on the right, the water level descends. But the rate at which the water level descends is very, very slow. It's so slow that we could say that V1 is approximately 0. So therefore, we can get rid of this term. So what we have left over is this. Rho g h1 is equal to 1 half p v2. So we could cancel the density because they're the same. And so we have g h1 is equal to 1 half v2 squared. So we need to multiply both sides by 2. And so v2 squared is equal to 2 g h1. And then take the square root of both sides. And this gives us the same result. So the efflux speed is the square root of 2gh1.
So this problem is a variant of the last problem. So we have a sealed storage tank which contains water to a height of 25 meters. The air above the water inside the tank has a gauge pressure of 4.5 atm. How fast will water flow out of a hole that is located at the bottom of the tank? So let's draw a picture. So let's say this is the tank. And it has water. And at the very bottom of the tank is the hole where water flows out. And so the height of the water level is 25 meters. Now the pressure of the air that's inside the sealed storage tank is 4.5 atm. So it's not open to the atmosphere. And that's the gauge pressure, which means, if you remember, the gauge pressure is the pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure. So the atmospheric pressure at sea level is 1 atm. So if the gauge pressure is 4.5, that means the absolute pressure is 4.5 units higher than the atmospheric pressure. So the absolute pressure inside is really 5.5 atm. And when the water leaves the tank, it's exposed to an absolute air pressure of 1 atm. So the difference in pressure, if you subtract these two, it's really 4.5, which is the important value. So now, in this case, we need to use Bernoulli's equation to get the answer. So P1 plus rho G H1 plus 1 half rho V1 squared, that's equal to P2 plus rho G H2 plus 1 half rho V2 squared. Now, we need to convert these ATM values into Pascals. 1 ATM is 101,325 Pascals. So 5.5 ATM, that's 5.5 times 101,325. So the absolute pressure at the top is 557 and 287.5 Pascals. So let's call this P1, and this is going to be P2. So P1 is 557,000 Pascals. Let's call this point A and point B. So B is at ground level, which means that H2 is 0. So we don't need this term. A is 25 meters above ground level, so H1 is 25. So this is going to be 1,000. That's the density of water times G times H1, which is 25. Now, we're going to assume that V1 is approximately 0, that the water level is descending at a very, very slow rate because the tank is so large. So we don't need this term. P2 is 101,325. So our task is to solve for V2. So now let's get rid of some stuff. Let's multiply these three numbers. 1,000 times 9.8 times 25 is 245,000. And let's add that number to it. So if we add 557,287.5, to 245,000. That's going to be 802,287.5. So that's equal to this number, and half of 1,000 is 500. So the next thing we need to do is subtract 802,287.5 by 101,325. And so we're going to have 700,962.5 is equal to 500 times V2 squared. So let's take the large number on the left side, 700,962.5. Let's divide that by 500. 
And so that's going to be 1401.925. And that's equal to v squared. So the last thing we need to do is take the square root of both sides. So the speed of water that leaves the tank is going to be 37.4 meters per second. And so that's the answer to this problem.